creative friends, I'm Sonia from Sustain My Craft Habit. I learned how to knit close to 20 years ago already and although it's not something that I do regularly anymore, I do love to pick up my knitting needles from time to time. I find it really, really relaxing. A few years ago, we shared this pattern. It's a super easy and quick knitting pattern for making a kid's headband. And we've gotten a lot of questions about how to use that same pattern, but to make it fit an adult. So I'm going to show you today exactly how to do that. It's a really great pattern because it's perfect for beginners. It knits up super quick. I'm able to knit the adult headband in 45 minutes. To make this knitted headband, you will need some yarn. And we recommend using this Wool Ease Thick and Quick yarn by Lion Brand. It's a nice, super bulky weight of, of a yarn, which is one of the reasons the knitted headband knits up so quickly. So I have two colors here. I'm gonna use this really nice, soft, I think it's oatmeal color. Uh, I'll have to double check that. Uh, but this is just to show you the label. So I'm gonna put this black aside. You'll also need a pair of knitting needles and you'll need size US 13 9 millimeter. I have a pair of circular knitting needles, although you, it's really best to use a pair of straight needles. I just can't seem to find my straight needles. So I'm gonna treat it, even though I'm not knitting on the round, I'm gonna treat it as if the, it were a pair of straight needles instead. So you're gonna need some scissors to cut off the ends. You'll need a darning needle to knit in the ends of the yarn and a button, actually probably two buttons um, as well for decorative purposes. You're gonna stitch those on top of the, the headband. So now that we have all of the supplies, we can get started with our knitting. To make the adult size headband, I'm going to start by just moving aside my scissors and buttons and all of that. I am going to cast on 44 stitches. I prefer to use the long tail method for casting on, but you can do so however you feel most comfortable. So I'm starting about here. Okay, double check that that's 44 stitches. Okay, so now to start, I'm going to flip my work over and I'm going to start with a two by two rib pattern. So I'm going to knit to these two stitches and then I'm gonna purl these two stitches, knit to these two, Curl these two and all the way to the end of the to the end of the row. So this is my first row. So I'm going to start by knitting. So I'm inserting my needle through the loop towards the back, and then wrapping the the yarn around the needle and pulling it forward. And then I'm going to do the same thing with this stitch, and then pull it forward. So now I have two stitches on this side, on this needle, and instead of knitting the next stitch, I'm going to purl it. So I'm gonna bring my yarn to the front and purl both of those stitches. So now I have four stitches on this needle. Continuing with the knit knit two, purl two. I'm knitting these two stitches and purling these two stitches.
Okay, so now I've come to the last two stitches on my row and they're going to be purl, two purled stitches. So one and then lastly again, put the needle towards the front of the loop and pull the yarn through and moving it over to the, the other needle. So this is my first, my first row is, is done. I'm going to now flip the work around and work on it from this side. So this will now become the wrong side. Um, although it doesn't totally matter. I mean, it's, it's either way. It has a bit of a pattern that you'll notice so you can actually decide which direction you want it facing. But for the, as far as the instructions go, this is considered the wrong side. So now you can almost see that first row that you just finished that it has this knit two, purl two, knit two, purl two pattern. So that's a two by two rib is what it's actually called. And I wanna continue with that pattern for one more row. So I see that this, these two stitches need to be knitted and then these two are going to be purled, two are gonna be knitted and then purled and so on all the way to the end of the row. If you find you're losing your place, you're miscounting, um, you can really see the difference between the knit stitching and the purl stitching. So the knit, you know that you need to um, place the needle through to the back and wrap. And then the purl stitches, you see there's a bit of a loop that's facing you. And whenever you see that, if you need to do a purl on top of that stitch, then you want to insert the needle from behind and through to the front. But actually, you need this on the front too. Okay, so I have four more stitches. So I'm knitting this and purling it. And that's it. So I just purled the last two stitches and that second row is, is finished. So that was the, the wrong side of the work. So now I'm gonna flip it and again, and work on my third row, which is gonna be my right side of the headband. Okay, so now for my third row, I am going to knit all the way across to the, to the end. So no more um, two by two rib pattern. It's just going to be a straight, um, straight knitting stitch or what they call a stockinette stitch all the way across. So I'm gonna take my knitting needles in hand and knit all the way across till I get to the end. Because I'm using circular needles, it does look like I'm knitting in the round, but remember I'm not. These ends are not um, attached. They're completely separate. Okay, so that row is done. This is my, that was my third row that I just knitted all the way across. I'm gonna flip the work, my work, and now starting on this end, I am going to do, instead of knit stitches, I'm gonna do a straight row of purl stitching. So purl these stitches, so from the back to the front. Now that I've completed the fourth row, I flip my work and I'm going to do my fifth row. So you see there's a bit of a pattern happening here. 
This is the two by two rib, two rows of it here. And then here you have two straight rows of stitching. Uh, so now what you wanna do is create uh, two even rows of purl stitching across. So this for this next fifth row, I'm going to take my knitting needle and purl all the way across. Okay, so that fifth row is finished, and you see how it looks different from the, the previous row. So you have this, this entire row we just did as purl, and then below it, it was knit. So it creates um, a bit of a, a, a neat te texture across it. So now to do my sixth row, I am going to turn my work again, and I'm going to do the entire row with knit stitches. So that row is finished and now I'm going to flip the work again. So you have six rows here with two with the ribbing and then you have two, two rows here and then two rows here. This is where it gets a little bit different from the child's head, uh, knitted headband pattern. If I was working on the child headband, of course the cast on stitches would be less, um, less but a, also, at this stage, what I would do is my one, two, three, four, five, six, my seventh row, I would switch to knitting this row, but instead, because I'm working on the adult pattern and I want it to be thicker than the child's knitted pattern, knitted headband, I'm going to do another row of purl stitching all the way across. So my seventh um, row of Stitching is going to be purl stitches. Okay, that seventh row is complete. I'm gonna flip the work. On my eighth row, I am going to knit all the way across. Okay, so that row is finished. That would be the eighth row. I'm gonna turn the work now to continue and I'm going to do my ninth row, which you see the pattern that it's creating, this ribbing here. I have two, two straight rows of stitching here and then I have four straight rows of stitching here on the reverse. So these are all purl stitches, these are all knit stitches. So for this next row, which would be row nine, I am going to, instead of continuing with a purl stitch, I'm going to knit this ninth row um, all the way across. It's all gonna be knit stitches.
Okay, so that was the ninth row. I'm gonna flip my work and continue. And this is what the pattern looks like here. So now for my next row, which is my 10th row, I'm going to purl all the way across. Yeah, so this 10th row is the last row of straight stitches. So once I'm done this row, I'm gonna turn the work around, flip the work, and then I'm going to do my two by two ribbing pattern to finish off the headband. Okay, so that row is finished. That was the 10th row. I'm gonna turn the work around. So this is the right side of the headband. Um, to finish, we're going to do the last two rows in this two, knit two, purl two pattern. So I'm gonna look here um, at this pattern and match it exactly on that end. So I'm going to do for this first stitch is gonna be knit and then knit again, purl, purl, knit, knit, purl, purl, all the way across. Okay, so for the last two stitches, they're gonna be pearls, pearl stitches, like that. So that's that row, and then flip the work and repeat that two by two pattern um, for the, the final row before binding off. So I'm gonna look at this, um, these two stitches, and I'm gonna do knit, knit, purl, purl, knit, knit, and, and so on. Okay, that was the final stitch of my headband. And now I'm gonna flip the work and I'm going to uh, bind off, uh, off of the, the knitting needles. Using a really loose bind off, binding off, uh, because you wanna be able to um, allow the edges to stretch as much as possible. I'm going to uh, work the needles all the way across. So I'm gonna knit these two stitches and then very, very loose. And then I'm gonna grab the, this first stitch and, and uh, loop it over the second stitch. And then I'm gonna continue all the way across. Knit very, very loosely and then pull that over that stitch. So you're only gonna ever have one stitch on, for the most part, you're gonna just have the one stitch remaining on this needle as you work your way across. Okay, so now I'm at the last, oh, at the last stitch, and I have this loop remaining on my needle. I'm going to just pull it all the way through. I'll trim it actually first. Cutting the end of the yarn, I have a little bit left over, and now I'm just gonna pull that through, and then that locks it, and there's the finished headband. So my last um, 
the last few things I need to do with this is what I like to do if it's like really kind of curly and, and like wonky, I will uh, take my steamer from my iron, uh, well, my iron with the steam setting and then just give it a bit of a quick steam and then just kind of that helps to shape the, the, the piece um, to what you want it to be. And then once that's done, I will take the ends and work in the long yarn ends with my darning needle and wrap the headband around, securing the, overlapping it about an inch and then securing the ends together. So attaching the ends together to give me my headband. Okay, so now that I've finished knitting my headband, this step is pretty important um, and I wanted to show you why. So I mentioned about taking the steam from my iron and just pressing it so that it kind of finishes it off and, and, um, and takes on a nice shape. So this side, I'll sh you can see that I've, this side I've pressed it, so I took my I took my iron and a piece of cotton and I put it over top and just gently um, added some heat to it and you can already see that it's a much nicer, more uniform shape than on this side where I haven't yet pressed it. So it's just a little bit more wonky and it's fuller, it doesn't lay as nice and as flat as this does. So I don't want to overpress it because part of the headband design is this nice texture that it creates with the purl and the, the knit stitches. So I'm just going to do um, what I did on this side, I'm going to do it on that side also. And what they call, they tend to call this blocking. So that's basically blocking your knitted piece to the size and shape that you want it to be. Okay, so with this other end, it's pretty long, so I'm going to use it to stitch the two short ends together. So with my um, short ends overlapping, like just about a half inch, doesn't need to be much, or you can adjust it. The nice thing about this um, headband is that the ends are open and you can overlap. If, it's, um, if the headband's too big, overlap it more. If it's too small, overlap it less. I'm going to overlap these and by about a half inch. I'm going to do it in a way that the stitching is not so visible. Okay, so now the ends are attached and I'm going to take my buttons and I think this, I don't think these, this needle is going to go through the holes, I don't think so. So I'm going to take another needle that I have with regular thread and then just stitch the buttons uh, onto the headband like that. While I love to knit, my sister on the other hand loves to crochet. So between the two of us, we've got knitting and crochet projects covered on the blog. We have a pattern for making this really pretty and multi-versatile knitted cowl. We also have a pattern for making uncrackable knitted eggs, which are perfect for Easter. And as for crochet patterns, we have this super easy crochet coaster pattern, this really pretty pillow in a sand dollar pattern, and we even have 
a simple crochet dishcloth pattern. So be sure to check out those projects for more details. And did you know you can make your own yarn? Well, we'll show you how in our other video on how to make t-shirt yarn using the whole t-shirt. So zero waste, we use as much of the t-shirt as possible. So that video has over a million views, so be sure to check that out. Hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching. Remember to subscribe to our channel and happy knitting.